Hi everyone and welcome to BioQuestrian. Today we're going to talk about probably the most hated subject in the equestrian community and that is the resources needed to buy a horse. And that's not only the money but also the time and other things needed to own a horse. First of all, I wanted to throw in a little disclaimer that anybody can buy a horse. You don't need Grand Prix level knowledge or skills, just like when buying a dog, you don't need to be a professional trainer. We also shouldn't judge how someone wants to train and ride their horse, as long as the animal is healthy and happy. If, for example, someone wants to buy a Grand Prix horse just for trail rides, it's okay and the person shouldn't be judged for that. Or if someone wants to get a foal just because they feel like it without having any experience, it's still okay as long as the horse is well taken care of, even though it is a huge mistake, but we will get to that soon. So summing up, one of the most important things that make my rides pleasant is staying out of other people's riding. As long as the horse is alright, its owner's riding is none of our business. Moving on to today's video, question number one. When do I buy a horse? It's never too late nor too early to buy a horse. If you are thinking about it, it's definitely worth pursuing. That is the optimistic answer, but let's think about it logically. Number one is time. Do I have the time to take care of my own horse? Sometimes loaning a horse is a way more convenient option. If you show up at the barn every day, then you have the time for your own horse. Even if you're able to show up three to five times a week, it's still okay. If you can only ride one to two times a week, you can still afford to buy a horse time-wise, but you really need to consider what kind of a horse you need, how old the horse would have to be, and you would have to pick out a really good facility where they'll be able to take care of your horse. If that is the case, it's worth considering loaning a horse instead of buying one or putting your future horse up for a loan. That way the horse is exercised more often and has more people to look after it. Number two, we've got money. A horse is not a hamster and it eats quite a bit, so you'll need a bigger feeding budget than you would plan for a huge dog. Keep that in mind. We'll go over the budget in detail in a second. Usually, if someone asks me when to buy a horse, I say that it's time to get one when your lessons per month cost the same as boarding in that same stable you take lessons in. So, let's say boarding at your local barn costs $800 and you spend $850 for lessons at the same stable per month. Of course, the overall cost of maintaining a horse will be higher Uh, but it's still a good determinant. If the stable you take lessons in doesn't have boarding in the offer, try to find a boarding facility with similar conditions for the horses and ask for their prices. Number three is social life. We usually never consider that when buying a horse and we really should. A horse will take up a lot of time. We would normally spend with our friends and family. Is that acceptable for you? Your own horse will bring you a lot of joy in the beginning, but there will be ups and downs for their own. Equestrians really don't have the time for a social life, and we're not joking when we say that we don't even know what free time means anymore. Number four, we've got the quality of your boarding facility. Since we have covered the non-material aspects of owning a horse, let's move on to the finances. If you like your lessons table and feel like the horses there are well taken care of, you should ask the barn manager about boarding your own horse there. When looking at a typical boarding facility, there are a lot of factors that influence the experience of riding your own horse. We will make another video on that. Now let's focus on the two most important factors, that is the horse's comfort and the rider's comfort. Usually we compromise and lower our own comfort to provide what's best for our horse. Usually, the closer to the city center and the more accessible the stable is, the more expensive it is to board there. And it's also hard to access things like quality turnout or trails to go on, and usually stables closer to the city will have more lessened horses. Boarding facilities with only private and sport horses will most likely have the best quality, but they are usually further away from the cities. 
In some typical boarding facilities, there will be simply no space for you and your horse, so you will get put on the waiting list. So before you go and get your horse, call the barn manager of the stable you picked and book a stall and give them the heads up on when you are going to bring your horse there. Number five, we've got the feed. Most boarding facilities include the hay and grain in the boarding price. But today we usually don't feed horses just hay and oat. Most of us use coarse mixes or mostly mixes as we call them in Europe or pellets that contain nutrients, vitamins and minerals. We also usually use the help of horse dietitians. You can ask for the average price of feed in your local equestrian store since that's where most of us get our horses feed. You need to spare some money for additional supplements but this should be pretty accurate. So next up we've got the tag and buckle up for this one. If you have any tag that's great because you'll need a lot of pretty much everything. Remember that your old saddle will most likely not fit your future horse so you'll need tag that fits both you and your horse. Luckily there is a lot of used tag up for sale but you'll need a professional to help you fit the tag to your horse. For this you'll need quite a bit of money, usually the equivalent of boarding cost for 4 to 10 months in your stable. It all depends on the kind of tech you want and either way only after buying your horse you realize how much stuff you still need to get. So you can already start looking for a tech locker and a trailer. Seriously though, you really should consider how are you going to transport your horse and where you will keep all of your tech. Most facilities will help you out with that. Number 8. A riding instructor. You will need to find one. Up until now the riding instructor was uh, included in the price of a lesson. You will need uh, someone to help with your riding at least from time to time. You will get frustrated sometimes and when that happens we are always happy to help but you'll need someone to support you and help you figure things out. The price of training is usually simar similar to the price of a lesson in your local lesson barn if you train regularly uh, with the same person. Occasional consults are going to cost more. At number 8 we've got something I call vet comfort. That's the additional money you will need to save up just in case. The amount you will need to save up is 10 times the boarding price per month. Start with just 3 times the boarding price. If your horse doesn't need surgery, you should be fine with that amount. You can also buy insurance for your horse. Don't forget the regular checkups. You'll need money for vaccines, overall checkups, dentist appointments at least once a year and more. Number 9, we've got the farrier. A good farrier can work wonders and save you some vet bills. Ask around your boarding facility of choice who is the local farrier and how much money you need per appointment. You will need to have the farrier out every 6 to 8 weeks. Number 10 cosmetics for your horse, of course. You will spend some money on these. Most important ones are fly spray, hoof maintenance cosmetics, also some shampoos and conditioners. The price depends on the brand and quality. Number 11 your clothes. Check the condition of your helmet, gloves, shoes, breeches and others. You'll need more. I don't really know why, but when you buy a horse, you magically start running out of riding clothes. Here you'll need to decide on the budget yourself. And last but not least, we've got shows. It's worth going to a show with a friend as a groom or just to support them, to check it out and see if you would like to participate in one with your own horse. The costs of going to a show vary depending on the standard of each show. Remember that it's not only the price you pay to participate in the show itself, but also uh, your show clothes and tag, the stall for your horse and hotel for you if you're spending the night and the transport there. And here there is no maximum amount of money you can spend. So why don't I tell you guys the exact price of things and why am I always talking about the price of boarding multiplied? Well, the standards and expectations are different and so are the prices. It's just more accurate to give you guys the price, referring to the price of boarding, because it's horses and as we all know, you can spend any imaginable amount of money on horses. 
So whenever someone asks me how much is a horse, I tell them it costs just as much as a car. And as per usual, we have prepared a little product for you guys. We pay the most for unfulfilled hopes. So ride horses here and now. If you're just learning how to canter, buy a horse that is safe and don't hope you will immediately compete with this horse. Remember to be reasonable and minimalist. You can lower the costs of maintaining a horse, for example, by loaning it to someone with similar preferences to yours. That is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment and a thumbs up down below and remember to subscribe to our channel if you liked the video. Check out our Instagram and TikTok for more.